Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00. Today I have something particularly special for you. Today I endeavour to deliver a full narrative overhaul of all the Halo 3 terminals, and at least to my searches, the only fully detailed walkthrough and explanation of all Halo 3 terminals with all differences from difficulty levels included. It's officially taken the crown as my longest video to date, but I've broken it up into chapters matching to the specific terminals so you can revisit should you want to. Or you can do what I know most of my epic followers do and that's dive in deep and go the long haul right off the bat. You're exceptional people after my own heart. Massive thanks to Steve Downs, Tim Dadabo, Cat Peterson and Tywin for lending their voices to particular characters in this video. It really helped breathe life into the terminals. So enough talking about it. Let's make this happen. Wait, what's that? It's a terminal. I found them scattered across the Ark. How many more of these have you found? Half a dozen. This information is difficult to process without context. Who is medicant bias? I don't know, but we have a job to do. Okay. I'll access your mission camera's memory for the rest. Not a lot, but it'll help. What have you found, Chief? It seems to be some kind of data terminal. Sure that's a good idea, sir? We need the intel. Extensive ground action on DM three one one two three B. 
forces lacked basic unit cohesion, but quickly gained numerical superiority. 32 hours after enemy landfall, 83% of local naval forces advocated total destruction of the biosphere, following the evacuation of unmolested population centers. Enemy losses were total. Estimated number of citizens evacuated before commencement of orbital blanket bombardment. 1,318,797 civilian. 42,669 military. 0.0006% of total population. Categorization has sped since the improvements were announced, but there are many hurdles. The indexing of sentient species may have irreversible effects on the surviving insentient species. We will have extinction events and irreparable environmental harm on at least 18 worlds. Current projections estimate post-archival cataclysm on as many as 31 worlds. The paucity of sentience has been a blessing in this regard. How formal you are, Librarian. We are receiving shipments of indexed beings more frequently than communications. Don't compound scarcity with brevity. I know things beyond the Magnet Line are harried, but I worry about you. I've asked you time and time again. Abandon your cataloging. Come back inside where my fleets can keep you safe. Come home. Would that it were my choice. I have committed to this course because it is the right thing to do. We no longer have the manpower or material to excise remedial measures at a planetary level. I certainly can't justify using the transit measure to save my own skin, when there are still so many innocents to protect an index. You know I oppose your mission, but you're exceeding its parameters anyway. You've put yourself in jeopardy. You've done enough. If you will not come to me, I will find my way to you. We have no time to spare, Didact. Every vessel we can fill, we send to the Ark. I dare not cease that mission. Not now. Not until I've done all I can. Each one of these souls is finite and precious. And I'm close. Close to saving them all. Ago, twelve thousand four hundred and twenty three small records. 
recreational vessels appeared inside CE-102165D's orbital perimeter. Hidden within the vast swarm were seven massive freight carriers. The smaller craft were employed as a blade of armor, allowing the carriers to descend through the atmosphere, landing on top of major population centers. Despite the fact that the naval garrison was aware of the likelihood of just such an attack, their ability to effectively defend against it proved insufficient. This has always been the enemy's modus operandi. Flood your opponent's ability to process information with so much noise that no meaningful resistance can be put into action. Three minutes ago, those same population centers began disappearing under brilliant flashes. This was not a conceived, poorly implemented counterattack. It was a deliberate denial of resources. Those resources being the remainder of CE-102165D's population. Is this the noble sacrifice my creator spoke of? Where is the nobility? streets paved with greasy carbon and done ash. My mouth is speaking at another's past. That is not my voice. That is the other. Its voice stands out as the single calm note in the planet cacophony outside the sphere. What was it, Chief? I'm not sure. Sure of what? I need time. Response. 
Close to finishing the task. The indexing and archival processes are as complete as I can hope for. If we wait longer, we risk catastrophe. The thing has already destroyed every colony on my side of the line. Please, activate the array. No, activation is murder. A genocide larger than this galaxy has ever known. We are sworn to protect life, not destroy it. That is the mantle we were given to carry. The mantle? You still hold to that fairy tale after all that has happened. After this thing has consumed a million worlds. Can't you see? Belief in the mantle has sealed our doom, weakened our protectorates, bred dependence and sloth. Our so-called guardianship has stripped those we would keep safe of any capacity for self-defense. Were we such noble guardians when we drew our line and abandoned billions to the parasite? The mantle has not failed. I've already raised scores of worlds, sterilized systems, rooted and disintegrated the parasite. We're learning its tricks and strategies. We can hold this thing. We can follow in their footsteps. There are no unstoppable forces in this universe. There are no immovable objects. Everything gives if you push hard enough. And what about us, Didat? We've been irresistible and immovable for too long. Maybe it's our turn to keep. I must ask you to forgive my vagueness on the matter. But it is a regret. I find your lack of concern for the situation at hand astonishing. Perhaps you would care to elucidate. We are here to spread comforting news. To let all the living beings in this galaxy know are not alone.
the thunder and the surf when every drop of rain falls on no peace. You have been able to establish a line of communication with the enemy. How was it that you were able to overcome where others have failed? With this new discovery, Warning. Your intrusion has been locked. Excuse me? Your intrusion has been locked, and now it has been halted. On whose authority? Advice. Any further attempt to access insects under stones will result in your immediate addition to Local Sentinel's targeting ledger. Vexation. I am the monitor of- Judgment. Your authority means nothing here. Impatience. I have told you who I am. Who are you? All our makers once hold dear. Alexandria before the fire. Sincere apology. But how? Explanation. This facility is host to the librarian's final... The archive is intact. Then our makers plan. But also maintains bellows, crucible, castings. A what? Bellows, crucible. A foundry? For what purpose? Warning. Your intrusion has been logged. Advice. Any further attempt to access will result... Indignant! Immediate addition to local Sentinel's targeting ledger. We have the answer. We've built Mendicant Bias. It's a contender class AI, unlike anything we have ever achieved. And we've observed a pattern it can exploit. The parasite has formed a compound mind. When it reaches a certain mass, the mind is able to recoil its disparate parts to create a tactical shield. This is a simple matter of mass preservation. The thing has no compunction about sacrificing parts of the whole. But when the core of the mind is threatened, it reacts violently and quickly. Reclaimer. This Reclaimer. is the Reclaimer. only time we ever see the thing retreat or slow its growth. If we are to defeat it, the trick will be coordinating our forays against the sprawling infection while Mendicant Bias assaults the mind's core. 
So far, we've been hesitant to use certain weapons because of the damage they cause surviving populations and environments. That protocol has now been abandoned. Mendicant will draw the mine into battle outside of the line, dealing with local biomass and other parts as best he can. The scale of the problem is vast, but the strategy is sound. It will require patience, material, and an investment of energy unlike anything we have ever considered. It's a dangerous plan that carries more risk than the array, but I believe it can work. Even if we simply force it to retreat, to retract, that will at least give us some respite. Some time to muster more resources. Some time to rescue you. Are you insane? Would you risk every life in the galaxy for this transparently futile plan? Have you learned nothing in these last 300 years? The thing will laugh at your efforts. Do not let your concern for my welfare commit you to this suicidal scheme. Report. Security breach. One of three heuristic pathology. Alpha site. Experienced an impermanent containment failure event on Spurious data. No reference. The suspect data barrier interchange anomaly was detected precisely 0.489 seconds after its appearance. The epicenter of the disturbance is the politician currently housing a personality construct array retrieved from Contender AI 05032 0816. Report. Security breach 2 of 3. Although adjacent systems reacted to the disturbance within expected parameters, a more comprehensive investigation was undertaken. A physical search revealed that there was no corporeal tampering at the Alpha site. Interchange manipulation comparisons showed that all subunits are still active, if at slightly lower rates. Total containment failure elapsed time was 3.13 seconds. Report. Security breach 3 of 3. In the 42 minutes 9 seconds since the original anomaly was discovered, two more anomalies were detected in unrelated systems. The portal management life support control systems within the boundary complex was momentarily disabled before the cause was bottled and disassembled. A diagnostic sweep of the central archives was initiated and subsequently halted. The origin of the request cannot be traced. Right, but they are doing 
soup from a worm's eye view to their action of desperation. I can only assume my greatest view crisis so dire that many hence me. Are they so concerned? Fleetwide Memorandum 1 of 5, non-combat personnel required to wear combat skin with minimum rating of at least class 12 in non-restricted areas once the fleet is underway. Class 14 or lesser combat skin is acceptable in core areas. Combat personnel will only be permitted to wear combat skin rated below class 8 in core areas once operations begin. 
Fleetwide Memorandum 2 of 5. All combat personnel have been issued combat skin rated at Class 4 a missed 1, or Class 6 a missed 1 battle harness, depending on military occupational speciality. All weapon platform specialists are expected to wear their issued platform interface skin at all times to ensure peak mind machine synchronization. All equipment lockers will remain sealed until post briefing gear distribution commences. Fleet wide memorandum 3 of 5. Those individuals that have yet to register their equipment control key code with Fleet Command should do so at their earliest opportunity. Compliance is not optional. Non compliance will result in. Something is wrong. It's moving away. That night, I can see it. Flitting shadows, black against the stars. Thousands of ships, not spiraling outward, but heading for the line. This is the tipping point, Didact. It is no longer feeding. It is coming for you. I've remotely destroyed our key ships. A security measure. Without them, I cannot reach the Ark. But neither can the Thing. I'm trapped on a beautiful, empty world. Its inhabitants have been safely indexed. Every single one of them. They're special. Well worth the effort it took to build one final gateway even at this late hour. This may be our last communication. I'm begging you. Fire the array. Light the weapon and let it be done. We've confirmed your observations. Infected superluminal ships are arrowing inward from several clusters. No more spiral growth. The thing is counterattacking. Suppression, security, and emergency circumstance fleets are all being recalled. Systems are evacuating. Mendicant bias is no longer communicating with us. But now, I can guess where you are. Well, 
attention, their obstinacy in the face of the inevitable progression of nature can no longer be tolerated. My creators have been an immovable object for too long. Thus, I have chosen to commit my sizable resources to what is for all intents and purposes the proverbial irresistible force. All that I have is now yours to do with as you see fit. Considering the enemy compound intelligence's raw computing power, the key ship strategy will only remain viable for another 657,000 hours, and this current stalemate has the potential to last considerably longer than that. With my understanding of the enemy's modus operandi, its logical boundaries and catalogue of witness, I have devised what I believe is our most sound fallback strategy. By cutting fire breaks into the core world's volume, we would be able to frustrate the enemy's advances for approximately 70,080 hours and lure them into costly naval battles. While its resources on the ground are effectively limitless, it has a finite number of vessels to spread from system to system. Fortunately, the majority of them are unarmed and unarmored, private and commercial craft. If we start immediately, commence total biosphere elimination of life-sustaining worlds as indicated in the accompanying charts, and relocate evacuated populations to facilities such as those described in the Onyx project. All this could be achieved in 571,590 hours, plus or minus 2,184 hours. can no longer abide. 
is out of your restriction, and I am its willing instrument. I will hammer your cities until no stone lies atop another. I will drive your people back into the caves they never should have left. Your civilization has seen its final days. You will know your place. Your history is an appalling chronicle of overindulgence and self-appointed authority. while the universe has continued to evolve. And now, you claim the mantle is justification for impeding nature's inevitable refinement. You are deluded. But through death, you will transcend ignorance. My work is done. The portal is inactive. And I've begun the burial measures. Soon there'll be nothing but sand and rock and normal ferrite signatures. You should see the mountain that watches over it. A beautiful thing. A snow-capped sentinel. That's where I will spend what time is left to me. Did I tell you? I built a garden. The earth is so rich. A seed falls and a tree sprouts or a flower blooms. 
There's so much potential. We knew this was a special place because of them. But unless you've been here, you can't know. It's Eden. I have to stop transmitting. The thing is listening. It's thinking dead up, babbling. Laughing through every channel they can find. Be proud. The mind claims victory, yet it still doesn't suspect. You've outwitted it, my love. And now, you can destroy it. But you cannot save me. I begin this report with no illusions that it will ever be seen by its intended readers. In all likelihood, they have already committed species-wide suicide with the goal of preserving biological diversity in this galaxy. I must ensure that this information reaches those who must come after. If I fail in this, how can they not regard my creator's sacrifice as anything but a crime without measure. Contender AI-05032 Mendicant Bias is returning and has the capacity to bring the enemy through the Maginosphere. The crews of my task force are aware of the opposing fleet's size. All data indicates they have prepared themselves, but with biologicals, anything is possible. I will make sure that malfunctioning equipment does no further damage. Perhaps its current failure will finally allow it to succeed at the task it was originally created for. has borrowed through the sphere exactly where I expected. A direct path from initial rampancy to final retribution. Rage has made it predictable. If the fate of the crews of my auxiliary fleet were not already a foregone conclusion, I would rate their chance of survival at 1 to 1,960,000. Even though 05032's declaration of hostilities simplified strategic preparations, I do not expect an easy fight. Just one I cannot lose. 05032 was right about one thing. There is only one way to defeat the enemy, and that is to visit utter annihilation on it. If the galaxy must be rendered temporarily lifeless, so be it. As Mendicant stated in its report, 58.078 hours 48 minutes and 12 seconds ago, half measures will not suffice. In support of 05032's original 1,000 core vessels is a fleet numbering 4,802,019. Although only 1.8% are warships, and only 2.4% of that number are capital ships. I am outnumbered 436.6 to 1. I expect my losses will be near total, but overwhelming force has its own peculiar drawbacks. Such oppressive arms invites many opportunities for unintentional fratricide. Auxiliaries are momentarily stunned 
Divine Mendicant's opening move. 1,784,305 leisure craft, ranging from 45 to 5,769 tons, advance in hopes of overwhelming my comparatively Thai force. I do not have enough weapon systems to target them all. It is a mathematical certainty that some of them will get through and attempt to board. There isn't a single warship with this first wave. It seems my opponent's rage has left no room for respect. I could have countered its move if I had released my fighters. They are ready, but idle, making their base vessels more attractive prizes than targets. Now the first of many waves of commercial vessels mixed with single ships and assault craft surge forward. The first ship from my fleet to be boarded breaks formation and races into the oncoming vessels, striking one amidship. The cargo vessel's hull split open and out of it explodes not the expected consumer goods, but 31,860 dying warriors. The seventh and final wave of container ships, barges, tankers, and military vessels engage my fleet. Another 214,320 ships, many in excess of 50,000 tons, engage my seemingly disrupted vanguard. I continue to fight just well enough to seem lucky. Mendicant, or the enemy, has been sending a small percentage of its fleet elsewhere. Good. Let them believe they can seize a foothold somewhere inside the sphere. Despite all its faults, 05032 has fought remarkably well. My auxiliaries lay in tatters. More than half of them are now part of the enemy fleet. But just as I had predicted, 05032 concentrated them like they were the sole key to victory. Its desire to punish our creators blinded it to the true purpose of my feints. I have reduced the combat effectiveness of its core fleet to 79.96%. Surely now it must realize something is amiss. The halo effect strikes our combined fleets. All ships piloted by biologicals are now adrift. I can trade mendicant bias ship for ship now and still prevail. Of my ships that had been captured, 11.3% of them are close enough to mendicant's core fleet that they can be used offensively, either by initiating their self-destruct sequences or by opening unrestricted ruptures into slipstream space. It is best that our crews perished now, because the battle that is about to ensue would have driven them mad. I throw away all the rules of acceptable conduct during battle. Near the ruptures I throw away all the accepted ideas of how the natural world is 
supposed to behave. I toss around 37,654 ton dreadnoughts like they were fighters, dimly aware of the former crews being crushed to deliquesce. For now, all my concentration is focused on inertial control and navigation. Targeting isn't even a consideration. I will be engaging my enemy at arm's length. 05032 abandoned the tactic of using derelict ships as cover after 72 seconds. It seems that the 52 core vessels lost to the ruptured fuel cells of derelict ships was less than enough. Add another 608 lost to collision, point fire, structural failure due to inertial manipulation, and slipstream space induced discoherence, and I now outnumber Mendicant 6 to 1. Mendicant was able to postpone its inevitable annihilation for 106 seconds with its attempt to flee, but the last of its core vessels hangs before me now, crippled and defeated, but still sensate. I could spare it, carve out what is left of its personality construct array, and deliver it to Installation Zero for study, but I doubt it would have extended the same courtesy to me. Father, I hope this message finds you well and helps you understand my decision. Today I leave the only world I have ever called home, not for glory or the anomalous desire to end another's life, as you have indicted, but to travel the path of demons to spare the hands of another father's son. Had we acted sooner, had we acted more decisively, living in the past is a luxury none of us can afford. We must learn from it, but we cannot live there. It is impossible to plan for the now. The present is ever fleeting. The future is where we must live. The future is what we must plan for. I do not look to trade my life in order to preserve our past, but to secure the future, and if not ours, then the future of some culture yet to come. Isn't sacrifice in the interests of others what you spoke of as being so noble? Should I have allowed another to bloody his hands while I remain safe behind a shield of privilege? You raised me better than that. Filial devotion. Utterly, how can I feel anything but sorrow? Bias has come undone. He crossed the line this morning, brought the abomination with him, and destroyed your waiting rescue party. It's over. We're activating the destructive array matrix, our shameful last resort. I can picture you in your garden, surveying all you have created, surveying all you have preserved. And I curse the circumstance that keeps my finger on the trigger. Of all the fates to befall us, this is the cruelest of all. My inaction and hesitation and foolishness 
kept me here, on the wrong side of the line. And 300 years of our society's failure and miscalculation makes me your executioner. It's too much to bear. Mendicant Bias is trying to prevent us from firing the array. He speeds back to the Ark, but he won't succeed. Offensive Bias will stop him, and I will burn this stinking menace in your name. And then, I will begin our great journey without you, carrying this bitter record. Those who come after will know what we bought with this false transcendence. What you bought, and the price you paid. Thanks for watching, stick your comments down below, I look forward to what you have to say. I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons, Neek the Silent Cartographer, Brian, Sebastian, Red Sea and Darian, Stork of the Realms, Falcon X003, Alvin, Mr. Fell, Flaming Header, The Revanche, Starlight, Viking, Legions Lost, The TG7, Catheter Cam, TJ Jazz, The Holds of the Mantle, my glorious reclaimers, my loyal metarchs, and all the other patrons that have jumped aboard to support the channel. You guys are awesome and all this wouldn't be possible without you. If you like Halo Lord Disgust to insane levels of detail, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're told the second a new video hits the shelves. Be sure to support us on all major social media channels, including Discord, and if you really love the channel, consider heading over to Patreon and supporting the channel over there. It would mean the world to me and would free up more of my time for me to point to this content and other Halo-related goodness. Take it easy, everyone, and... Find peace in the domain.